Oh, hi guys. How you doing? All right, so you caught me in an awesome experiment and uh, demonstration. So we are in Earthquakes Unit. So we're going to look at uh, rock deformation and how uh, the rock breaks and why we create, or how it creates faults. And that is the basis and foundation for how we um, have earthquakes. Okay, so earthquakes usually happen along a fault line. And the fault line is a break in the rock. So basically, how do we how do we get that point? So rocks are, as you know, pretty solid. Okay, uh, you don't think of rocks as being easily broken. We build out of them. We build uh, schools, houses, uh, prisons, all these uh, buildings that you don't want to break or disintegrate out of rock and building materials, uh, cinder blocks. So I have my nice bit of granite. Okay, my nice bit of granite here. My intrusive igneous rock, it's formed from cooled magma, very slow, deep on the ground. It has the five uh, minerals, and it is a beautiful coloration, and it's pretty strong, right? If I get my hammer right here and I start to bang on it, nothing really happens. Maybe a little bit of uh, breaking on the top, a bit of weathering on the top, this weathering, but nothing really does change. It doesn't break. It doesn't, it doesn't fall apart. It's pretty strong, but... Inside the Earth, the Earth is so huge and it has a lot of pressure and force that these rocks do break. They do break and they do um, uh, create fault lines and fractures. Now, what we have to look at is uh, what causes the forces, right? The forces are caused by uh, convection currents in the asthenosphere, which in turn moves the, uh, the crustal plates and part of the lithosphere. And all these surface plates, you know, the 14 major plates and seven small plates, they're all moving around on the surface and they bang into each other and they're pushing on each other. And we discussed that with divergent plate boundary, convergent plate boundary, and transform plate boundary, how these plates are moving, how when they meet at the boundary, there's interaction. Okay, so we know there's subduction and transform plate boundaries, like we discussed with uh, California. We have all this force pushing the rocks. And uh, so you get a lot of stress on the rocks. Now, stress on the rocks is uh, a force over the area. So if I was going to hit this rock on a certain area, I'm applying stress to this piece of granite. Where I hit it from the hammer, I apply stress. That's what happens naturally in the ground. So uh, the, the, the force is coming from this side, and it's pushing the rock, and you get stress. So. I can't use this rock very easily here, but I can use my bits of plywood that I got nicely from the wood shop um, in the school. So the first thing I'm going to do is stress, okay, um, on a rock, there's three types. There's elastic, there is ductile, and there is brittle. Okay, we'll start with the first one, so elastic. So think of an elastic band, how that moves and stretches and then comes back to its original position. That's what elastic means. So if I was going to apply stress to this piece of plywood right here and I want to bend it, okay, if I let go, it comes back to its original position, all right? So I bend it, change the shape or changes the, you know, way it's curved and then it comes back to normal. So that's elastic stuff. I'm just, just applying some force with my thumbs on this piece of plywood I'm applying stress that happens in the Earth's crust, and it would bend and then come back. When you release the stress, it comes back. Okay, so that's what elastic means. Now, if I was going to look at a um, trusty ruler, okay, this is very elastic -y, but if I was going to add more stress and consistent stress to this ruler, I would actually so bend it, and I'll come back, and that will be our elastic uh, nature with the rock. If I was able to bend it and keep the stress and add enough stress in a certain area, then I would have this consistent and uh, bend, okay? This change of shape uh, to the ruler. So that's what too much stress can do to a rock, is that it can change its shape or volume or size, and we call that strain. So this is not going to return back to its original position. Now it is now forever changed shape. So I have bent this, this ruler 
and now it has forever changed shape. That is called strain. So if I put too much stress on the rock, it can cause strain on a rock. And this is what strain looks like, change of, of shape. Okay, so that's strain. Now, if I'm gonna go even further, right, add more stress to the rock, okay, and let's take my lovely, delicious Pop-Tart, okay? All right, my Pop-Tart. Lovely breakfast uh, food. Now, if I was gonna start to bend this Pop-Tart, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna break, all right? It's gonna break. Now, in, um, in uh, geology, in our science, we call break a fracture, fracture or a rupture, where I put too much stress on it and it can't handle the stress and it just breaks apart into different pieces. Now, before it breaks, uh, there's a material that we call brittle. Brittle is another word for shatter. So uh, take glass, for example. Glass is strong, but if you apply enough force to it, it's gonna just, just shatter all over the place and break into a million pieces. My glass is dangerous when it breaks. But this Pop-Tart is like my glass, right? But a lot less dangerous and more tasty. So when I basically do this, I put my, uh, I do it, it breaks. So a little bit of stress, it breaks into smaller pieces. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of stress, it breaks from it. There's, there's very little ductile nature to this pop tart. It doesn't change shape and stay there. It moves and then it breaks. It moves and breaks. So we call that brittle. So it's brittle, all right? That's the stage before really it breaks. So if I have my my bit of plywood, okay, then that's my elastic. This is pretty hard to make ductile. If I, if I did it there, it could change the shape a little bit, but this could also be known as a brittle material, okay, because I can break it and it ruptures, and this is called, called a fracture. Now, as you can see, come a bit closer, as you can see, the ends are not perfectly uh, broken, they are jagged, they are uneven. That's what happens in the earth, right? The rocks are gonna break, it's gonna be an uneven, uneven break, and basically you get a lot of friction and sticking when these rocks move. So it's a perfect example of what happens in the crust is that these two sides are moving and they stick. And when they stick, the energy builds up, and when they when the energy gets too much, they slip. And that's what creates the earthquake. That's the release of seismic energy, is this break and release of the energy that's been trapped on either side of the fault, okay, the break, and that's what we get for our earthquake. So if I was gonna take this big piece of plywood, all right, this is more like a, a rock material that's very, very strong, I have to add a lot of stress, a lot of stress to this. I'm talking like, crazy amounts of stress to change this into any kind of ductile, or it might just be brittle, and as soon as the stress gets too much, it's gonna break and cause a fracture. So that is how we get these massive cracks in the rock that are hundreds of miles long, that we call a fault line, and then the movement either side of that fault, that break, like here with my plywood, that is where we get the energy buildup, and eventually we get an earthquake. All right, guys, so that's rock deformation and how we can simulate using wood and Pop-Tarts how this rock in nature would have stress applied to it, would break, and create earthquakes. All right, guys, thanks a lot.